In 2012, the world's drug market was completely upended by the internet. The widespread adoption of Bitcoin and the invisibility of the dark web allowed a bright but misguided 28-year-old libertarian to suddenly become one of the world's biggest drug kingpins. After finishing his master's degree in physics at Penn State, Ross Ulbricht tried online day trading on the stock market, but failed. He tried to start a video game company and failed, and tried to run an internet-used bookstore, but found little success in that too. Then, assessing that the war on drugs was a complete failure, and inspired by potential uses for Bitcoin, Ulbricht got the idea that would change his life forever. He would create a website where people could buy anything anonymously and have it shipped to their actual addresses with no trail leading back to the transaction. Silk Road went live in January 2011 with the sale of the magic mushrooms Ulbricht had cultivated himself. He ran the site under the name DPR, or Dread Pirate Roberts, a clever nod to the film The Princess Bride. It wasn't long before the site started to look like Amazon and eBay, with user profiles and reviews that cemented Silk Road's legitimacy. Thousands of listings featured everything from Colombian cocaine to black tar heroin to Oxycontin to guns. One year later, as the site was booming, the Department of Homeland Security put together a task force called Operation Marco Polo to bring it down. Special Agent Carl Force explored the site, learned about Dread Pirate Roberts, and figured that the anonymity of the marketplace was its Achilles heel. Force was an undercover specialist and created a new identity on Silk Road. Eladio Guzman, a blind and one-eyed drug cartel member from the Dominican Republic, screen name Knob. He messaged Dread Pirate Roberts immediately with a bold opening to buy Silk Road. DPR responded the next day, I'm open to the idea, what did you have in mind? And just like that, Agent Force was in. For the next year, they messaged each other on Torchat almost nightly. As Silk Road gained popularity, earning Ulbricht tens of millions of dollars in Bitcoin from commissions, Knob was gaining the all-important trust of the still anonymous Dread Pirate Roberts. What happened next is incredible. Agent Force, aka Knob, arranged for a shipment of cocaine to Curtis Green, a Mormon grandpa in Utah, and dedicated Silk Road forum moderator, whom DPR had hired to help him run the site. When Green accepted the cocaine, the SWAT team busted in and arrested him for receiving drugs. For several days, Green was inactive on Silk Road, and when Ulbricht saw that Green's admin account had been used to steal $350,000 in Bitcoin, he freaked out and put out a hit on Green. And who did he turn to to carry out the deed? None other than his trusted associate, Knob, aka Agent Force. So Force and the FBI faked Green's torture and death. They even made a video and sent it to DPR to convince him. Knob was now indispensable to DPR, who paid him $80,000 for carrying out the hit. In another crazy twist, Agent Force has now been charged with keeping some of the seized money for himself and with being a paid mole for Silk Road, selling Ulbricht information about the government's investigation. Around the time of Curtis Green's arrest in Utah, the New York-based Cyber Squad 2 team was beginning their investigation of Silk Road. They spent countless hours figuring out how to crack the Tor network that Ulbricht was hiding behind. Meanwhile, Ulbricht was letting his guard down, growing arrogant in his belief that the site would never be found. But after reading a user's warning on a Reddit thread that a misconfiguration somewhere in the site's code was leaking its IP address, the Cyber Squad was able to eventually find it and trace it back to Silk Road's server at an ultra-modern facility in Reykjavik, Iceland. After traveling there and obtaining from local law enforcement the server's mirror drive, the agents were able to recreate the entire Silk Road system back in their lab. This gave them super user access, allowing them to see everything including DPR's every move. They saw how he extracted his cut from a Bitcoin escrow account every Saturday night, they read his 1400 pages of chat logs, and learned DPR had ordered the assassinations of others who had tried to blackmail him. In the end, what brought Dread Pirate Roberts and Silk Road down was the reality that what you post on the internet stays on the internet. At one point in 2013, Ulbricht, using the handle Altoid, had asked a question about Tor on a Stack Overflow forum, a post that also listed an email address, rossulbricht at gmail.com. That was the break the investigators had been waiting for. Within days, after a perfectly orchestrated operation that busted him in the San Francisco library by momentarily distracting him as agents grabbed his laptop before he could close it, Ulbricht was caught red-handed and arrested. 
More than $20 million in bitcoins were seized from Dread Pirate Roberts, and Silk Road was shut down. Ulbrich will go down in history as a pioneer who opened the door for drug sales to flourish in cyberspace, and having been convicted of those crimes, will spend the rest of his life in prison. This video was heavily inspired by the fascinating two-part in-depth piece from Wired Magazine, reported by Joshua Bierman, linked below. And you can learn a lot more about the future of crime by downloading a free copy of the audiobook Future Crimes, with a one-month trial at audible.com, linked below. If you like this report, hit that like button to help it spread, and watch more TVC by clicking on the video on the left documenting 10 of the biggest unsolved heists in world history, or our investigation of the world's biggest criminal, Russian President Vladimir Putin, on the right. Until next time, for the two-man team here at The Daily Conversation, thanks for watching.